The change takes place on an individual level and it takes place on a societal level. But it all starts with empowering individuals with disabilities to change the way they think about themselves, to cast away the stereotypes that confine us, to find their voice, and to become actively involved in social change. I am my own voice. I make my own decisions. I can live where I want. I can work where I want. I can interact with who I want. And my goal is to tell other girls that, to tell youth in general, it's okay if you have a disability. You're somebody because of the way you're born. It doesn't matter the way. If there's something that I really want in life, that I know that it's possible to obtain it, because now I've been through it, so I know there's nothing that can stop me except myself. In 1980, a handful of advocates and organizers embarked on a mission to gain services and rights for people with disabilities through peer support, policy initiatives, and legal services. Access Living quickly grew to national significance, gaining recognition from community and political leaders. It co-founded the National Council on Independent Living and played a key role in passing major legislation, including the Fair Housing Amendments Act. With the ADA still not passed, Access Living worked in partnership with ADAPT, one of the movement's more radical groups, which took the lead on a milestone transportation case. ADAPT commenced a whole series of actions, including blocking buses, uh, going to the CTA board meetings um, with kazoos and cigars. It was a historic case. The judge uh, ruled in our favor. and it played a really incremental role in uh, causing the Americans with Disabilities Act to have a lift on bus provision. Had there not been an independent living movement with organizations scattered all through the United States of America, I don't believe we would have had an Americans with Disabilities Act. We were the network that was utilized uh, by the strategists in Washington to activate the grassroots. We had a meeting on Capitol Hill. Then suddenly somebody said, let's march to the White House. I went up to the telephone at the uh, guard's gate and picked up the phone and said, I'd like to speak to the president. And they said, who is this? And I told them. And that resulted in a meeting next morning in the White House with Boyd and Gray. And a couple days later, the log jam was clear. With the strength of the ADA, Access Living has helped create systemic change in both Illinois and nationally, advancing inclusive environments for individuals and communities. Access Living staff and volunteers help create systemic change in housing, education, community living, employment, and transportation. To me, Access Living is a great example of an independent living center at its best. You have a lot of dynamic programming that's, that's unusual for Centers for Independent Living, whether it's the legal programming, the youth leadership work that they do, the national advocacy work that they do. They've just been kind of an innovator and a leader in so many ways. Access Living is, I really don't think I'm exaggerating, one of the most uh, best independent living centers, not only independent living centers, but the disability empowerment centers in the world. Without them, we would still be in the dark ages and not being able to leave home or have our own home not able to work, not able to obtain an education. But now all of that is possible, partly because of Access Living's leadership. Disabled people are not people we haven't known before. They're our relatives, they're their friends, and they're our neighbors. And they deserve the same rights as those people have. Every day, Chicagoans have a chance at a decent life, whether that's helping them with 
economic literacy or finding housing or learning how to hire and fire a personal assistant or whether it's attending a support group on sexuality and disability or it's coming to an organizing training. All of these things are geared towards growing their self-esteem, developing what we used to call in the old days a rights-bearing attitude, and then using that new way of perceiving self for the betterment of all. Every time I get on the metro train, every time I uh, take an accessible taxi, I am experiencing the results of um, Access Living's policy and It has given me a sense of who I am, it has given me resources, it has given me a job, and I just keep climbing that in ladder. Those curb cuts. They were the ones making sure the museums had wheelchair accessible doors. They were helping make it possible for AJ to go to the same school as his brother. I can definitely say that I've gotten more from Access Living than I've been able to give back.